G'day buddies and weirdies and welcome back to the channel. Today we are doing a review video as you would have seen by the title and thumbnail and it is on the Dymax SpaceX Reef LED light which was provided to me completely free of charge by Ryan from Kareen Pet Central. When I set up my Nano Reef Tank which we're going to have a look at obviously because it's a, uh, a reef light. When I set that one up about two and a half months ago he saw that and wanted to give me a reef light for that tank and that's where he sent me the SpaceX light. So I want to say a massive thank you to him for sending me this light completely free of charge. However, we are definitely going to be covering the pros and cons and talking about everything that you need to know about this reef light. So I really hope you enjoy this video and if you're new here, please do consider subscribing if you like this video after you finish watching it. But before we do that, let's as always thank the traditional custodians of the land, the land I'm filming on, the land that you're watching this video on and the really amazing people that are managing our land at the moment like our councils, park rangers, you know who they are, everyone amazing like that. But without further ado, let's have a look at the Dymax SpaceX Reflight. Okay, so just to preface, the SpaceX Reflight is not owned by Elon Musk, just getting it out there. However, it is in fact owned by Dymax, who is a really great aquarium company based in Australia who have really been rising in popularity because of their extensive range of products, both in freshwater aquariums and saltwater aquariums, as well as the really sort of unique stylish take that they uh, sort of approach aquarium products. A lot of their um, products that you see are very well display quality and um, I'm a big fan of that. So today we're specifically going to be looking at the Dymax SpaceX Reef Light and um, it actually comes in two variants. So there is a freshwater light which is the freshwater or fauna light science and the reef light is the reef light science. So we're going to look at the reef light specifically. However, if you want to see a detailed review of the, um, the freshwater light, then definitely check out Aquamate's channel because he did a very extensive review unboxing the light and also showing you how the light works for the freshwater variation. So do check out that video. But in this video, we're specifically looking at the saltwater light. Okay, so I've been testing out the Dymax SpaceX light for just over two months. So I've really been able to experience the, the pros and cons of this light full circle. And I will definitely admit that it has both. There are a lot of things that I really like about this light. However, also things which I think could have been improved or could have been added for the price that this light retails at. And um, in terms of availability, it's a very, very readily available reef light. So most specialized aquarium stores will carry the freshwater or saltwater version. And basically every online aquarium store that I've found always seems to have this light in stock. However, when we look at prices, it is definitely a specialized reef light. So it retails for roughly around about $280 to $300. However, if you want to see the cheapest price that you can find this light online, that is definitely Kareen Pet Central. Genuinely speaking, they have this light, including shipping, for only $260, which is easily $20 to $30 lower than all of the other aquarium stores that I've generally seen that retail this light. And you can check that out for yourself on Google, but I'll also have the website link for Kareem Pet Central and this light in the description down below. But let's also run over the tech specs of this light. So overall, it's 15 centimeters long, 15 centimeters wide, and only 3.5 centimeters tall, with a total weight of around about 436 grams, meaning it's a very, very low profile light. And obviously with that, it is designed for nano to smaller type aquariums. The light also features a broad spectrum of colors, being four red, four green, 13 white, 21 blue, and six purple lights. This really allows you to really experience those fluoro photosynthetic colors that the um, coral exhibit when you shine those blue and purple lights under them, but also allows you to just have whites or reds or greens and really tinker around with the spectrum that you have. Also, probably the biggest win for me with this light is the fact that it comes with everything in the box. Now, when we look at a lot of other um, lights in this sort of price range with competitor brands, they generally just come with the light only, and then you'd have to go ahead and buy a hanging kit or a mount or some sort of 90 degree elbow arm or something annoying like that, which just adds added expenses. And if you're trying to run things on a budget, 
it can just be quite annoying to then fork out another $50 to $100 to get a mounting arm. The Dymax Basex Lite, however, doesn't go through that issue. It includes the light, the mounting arm, the AC adapter, the power cord, and um, also the screws to make sure everything is tight and in place. So that way, when you open the box, you've got everything you need to run this light successfully long term as well. Now, to talk about the overall body and build of this light, because it is housed in a plastic sort of body, I guess, it doesn't rust. Plastic doesn't rust. So that's really good. The mounting arm, however, is metal. However, I believe it's aluminium and it's got sort of like this anti-rust material all over it. It's like been electroplated with something. I don't know the exact details. However, it just means that it doesn't rust. I've got, um, you know, salt water on it. I've had salt creep on it before and dealt with all those kinds of things, but it just hasn't rusted. The screws, however, mine haven't, but they may rust down the line because they are possibly stainless steel. However, very cheap and very easy to replace. So um, I guess that's not really a big worry. So overall, in terms of being salt water tolerant, this light does fare up pretty well. However, there is a topic which I will touch on a little bit later. The other thing is, if you're not a big fan of lights causing a lot of heat because you're worried about them fluctuating temperatures in the tank, these lights actually do have an inbuilt fan, meaning that it basically never gets hot or even gets warm. I've had it running for like six hours in the day. I've touched it and there's very little warmth on it. So I think that's a really big winning factor. It only also uses 48 watts of electricity, which is very small in comparison to some of the other aquarium gadgets we have, like heaters or chillers. One of the main things I really like about this light is that it has a 3.4 meter long cord or about 10 feet long. And I really love when aquarium products include this really long cord length because it eliminates the usage of needing things like extension cords, which can fail or be really flimsy. And it just opens up a lot of issues. Whereas having that long cord attached with the light has so, so many benefits. Okay, so now let's look at the output and usage of this light. Can it actually grow corals? And if so, what kind of corals can the Dymex Base X light grow? Well, the short answer for that is that it can grow a wide range of corals. But to look at that in a little bit more detail, my reef tank specifically has a large amount of LPS corals, a small amount of soft corals, and even smaller amount of SPS, so small polyp stony corals. I am growing SPS, but it's just an experiment thing that I'm doing. And so far, they're actually doing really well. But on the topic of this light, um, it can grow small SPS frags. It can definitely sustain soft corals and LPS. However, I don't think it's got the lighting intensity or par level to grow large sort of full blown colonies of Acropora or SPS like that. So if you're looking to run a small sort of easy coral tank, it's definitely will be able to sustain that. Now, in terms of actually looking at the output of the light, that's probably where this light wins me over the most. Now, it doesn't disco ball even though it has all of those sort of different colors. It's a very smooth blend of light. And I think that's mainly down to the diffuser and that sort of like globed light bulb design that it has, which is a bit weird to explain. However, that very evenly distributes the light throughout the tank. So it can get a pretty decent amount of spread. But obviously, again, as the spread gets higher, the PAR level may get lower. Unfortunately, I don't have a PAR tester. However, um, in terms of that, that's why I'm saying it can grow easy corals and I can say that confidently, SPS may not be the best option. Right, so overall, this light is great to run on a nano reef aquarium. However, there are some things that I wanted to share that I'm not exactly a big fan of or like with this light. And um, I wanna be completely honest with you guys, but in no way is this you know trash talking a light. It is just to let you know that these are some factors which may not be suitable for your aquarium or what you're trying to achieve. The main thing that I found is that light does jut out quite a fair bit and it does have some sizing restrictions on the tank that you can run it on. On a standard 20 to 30 centimeter um, wide tank, it's basically not suitable because it only lights the front half of the tank because that 90 degree elbow arm does sort of come out quite a fair bit, meaning that the half of the tank gets lit, but then the rest is just light spill and that's just not effective to have running on a reef aquarium. However, the light is probably best suited for a 45 centimeter um, wide tank. Um, so one of those like shallow cubes or a 40 centimeter cube is probably best for this light in terms of output. Now, there is also a design flaw because 
sure you have the adjustability component where you can move the you know the lighting head back on the actual mounting arm however with that it only goes back to a certain extent before it gets blocked by the light but there are still the options to like pull it back even further um you're gonna see see this visually so it may not make sense when i'm explaining however that's just a design flaw that i found you do also have the option to mount the light on its side i guess however again that's just not the most visually appealing so there are some sizing restrictions that I want you to be aware of. The other thing that people may not like is the actual fan component of this light. Now, say, for example, you somehow drop the light into a saltwater aquarium or saltwater gets inside it or dust or those types of things builds up in the fan that can pose a bit of a problem. And as far as I know, there isn't any easy way to replace that fan. So, that's just a kind of an issue that I've experienced because yeah, you're dealing with salt water, it's bound to get everywhere at one point or another, and this could just lead to the overall quality of the light being hindered. The final thing that I wasn't a big fan of was the overall controls of this light. Now, what I was sort of expecting for a light which is roughly around about $300 is that you would have either Bluetooth or Wi-Fi compatibility. And I expected this because a lot of the other competitor brands like Aqua Illumination or Ecotech Marine, which have lights in this price range, generally do have the um, the Wi-Fi or um, Bluetooth via app, and that way you can control the lights and those types of things through the comfort of your smartphone. With this though, it doesn't offer that. It's got this sort of clunky button type control where you have to like flick through all of the, um, the settings to get to where you want. And the biggest thing which I wasn't a big fan of is that you can't run the light just by turning it on or off. You have to use the inbuilt timer that it runs on. So for someone like me that just gets up in the morning, turns on the light, and then when they go to bed, turns it off, you can't do that. You have to use the timer. And sure, it may not be a big thing for you. You may love timers. And I'm sure when I start to get into more, you know, proper, you know, bigger salt water aquariums, I want to run things on timers. But for now on this tank, I just want to enjoy it. And I don't like the fact that you have to run that inbuilt timer. However, like I said, this light has got amazing benefits like the cords, like the lighting intensity, like the blending of the light and those types of things. So it is really great to run on a specific tank, which I said at the start of this video, and that is a 40 centimeter tank or either a refugium light. This would be amazing on like a six foot, you know, saltwater aquarium and you're running a refugium in your sump. This would be the perfect go-to option for me. So that's probably where I think I'm going to be using this light in the future, not hinting anything, but I am definitely testing out other lights as well. So that's my in-depth review of this light, and I really hope that I covered everything that you were wanting to know or should know about this light. A big thank you to Kareen Pet Central for sending me this light free of charge and um, allowing me to take up to two months to film this review and present it to you guys. Okay, buddies and weirdies, I really hope you enjoyed this review video of the Dymax SpaceX Reef LED. And um, once again, a huge thank you to Ryan from Kareem Pet Central for sending me this light completely free of charge. Now, I do want to preface once again that the um, cons that I sort of pointed out about this light were completely due to personal situations. And some of the things that I pointed out, you may actually really enjoy about this light, which is perfectly fine. And like I said, it's just the perfect light for certain needs and situations and um, overall I am really enjoying it but I will be making a lot of other lighting reviews because I definitely want to experiment and test out a lot of things on that reef tank and as a matter of fact I'm working on another review video as we speak so um, definitely do check out you know further videos to come on this channel and you can do that by subscribing and hitting that little bell button it really helps me to grow my YouTube channel and make more review videos like this but as always, stay happy, stay safe, stay Aussie Australian. I'm about to drop this light. Bodgy and the Dimax out.